The Ice Castle International Training Center proved to be the final stop in Carlo Fossi's coaching career. It is a journey that began 67 years ago. It's an odyssey he shared with his wife, Krista, for close to 40 years. It is a life worth reliving. There were no visions of grandeur when Carlo Fossi stepped on the ice as a child in his native Italy. He was sickly in his youth, and doctors recommended exercise as therapy. Since Carlo's grandfather was an electrician at the main skating rink in Milan, skating was a natural choice. Carlo's affinity for figure skating was soon evident. He claimed his first Italian junior title in 1942 at the age of 12. And his first senior title, that one in pairs, in 1943. But it was after World War II that he truly left his mark on the sport. He won nine consecutive national titles and skated in two Olympic games. Carlo was just wonderful. When you'd see him, he would roar around the rink, a lot of speed, a lot of arms flying. I mean, it was almost like he was talking along with it. The arms would be flying, the music would be playing, the legs would be going. The skid of, of, the, of the foot going into an axle or a, a, a jump would leave a huge spray of snow and not much would happen. No, no height, no distance. Carlo was not known as a great jumper, but there was energy and fun and excitement about his skating. It was very much like his life and his own personality. You couldn't take your eyes off it. Fossey claimed a bronze medal at the 1953 World Championships and won two consecutive European titles. Then he turned his attention to coaching. It proved to be a momentous professional and personal decision. Four years later in Davos, Switzerland, a 28-year-old Fossey met a 15-year-old German skater who would become his wife. I knew pretty soon that he was the one that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Pretty much, not at 15, but at 16 for sure. Carlo and Krista married in 1960. Krista continued to skate under Carlo's tutelage, and the 1961 Worlds were to be her final competition. Those championships were canceled after a plane crash claimed the lives of the entire U.S. team, skaters, officials, and coaches. We came because, to the Broadmoor because the whole American team had just um, died in a plane crash. And so a lot of ice rinks in America needed new coaches. And we were lucky enough to be chosen for the Broadmoor. The Broadmoor in Colorado Springs offered everything Carlo Fossi desired, but he was still hesitant to leave his homeland. I really pushed him. And, because, you know, I was 18 at the time and I was never been in America. I thought, great, let's go to America. And I convinced him. From the moment they landed in New York, the Fossies loved their adopted homeland. When Carlo and Krista came, we crammed all three of us into this two-seater car and took off around New York. And it was, it was a very pleasant time. Carlo's impact on American skating was immediate. In just four years, he built the reputation that attracted the skater who would make him known around the world, Peggy Fleming. Fleming had already captured two national titles when she moved to Colorado Springs in 1965. She switched to Fosse in part to master her school figures, which accounted for 60% of the total score in her day. Carlo was wonderful for me. Um, just going to the Broadmoor uh, and having him, it was a wonderful combination because the ice surface was, um, was very good and it had um, like a grayish color to it so I could see my school figures. And then having, you know, the expertise of, of Carlo showing me those fine details, it made it like a piece of art. It made it look beautiful. It was a work of art when I was done. Fossey revealed in his work with Fleming another important trait, the ability to work with parents. Peggy's mother was fabled in the sport and would attend practice each and every day. Carlo made her a valuable part of the Fleming team. Mrs. Fleming called Carlo every night. I think it was even later than six. It was like after dinner time. And he would stay on the phone. He would lie down on the kitchen counter with a pillow under his head and um, talk to Mrs. Fleming about the day past and the day that was following. What was supposed to be done, what we didn't do today. Um, and sometimes those telephone calls lasted for an hour, an hour and a half. Fleming captured her first world title in Davos, Switzerland in 1966 with Fossey at her side. 
The two were inseparable as she made her triumphant march toward the 1968 Olympic Games. There, they claimed the ultimate prize, the gold medal. For me, I just sat there kind of by myself, waiting for the marks to come up. And I was like, not out of breath. I was like in a zone. He had a way of showing excitement that was like a little boy almost, um, you know, jumping up and down and just hugging, kissing you. And it was like he was more excited than I was. <laughs> you know, our Olympic win, I mean, he was so proud of me and so proud of himself. I mean, that was such a huge accomplishment to have his first Olympic champion. You can't do it yourself. It takes a lot of support to bring you to that moment. And it was wonderful that, you know, we shared that special time. When we return, the golden years for Carlo Fossi continue with more Olympic glory.